I will talk to Jendrik today. He will represent Germany at the Eurovision Song Contest 2021 with I Don't Feel Hate. Finally, hey. <laughs> Sorry. Finally, we got the opportunity to meet with you. How are you feeling today? I am feeling hungover. Hello. Nice. Wait, wait, wait. First, I say thank you for having me. Otherwise, it would be very unpolite. But I'm, I'm feeling very hungover. I drank a bit too much yesterday, I think, in the evening. But it was, it was due. I haven't drunk for like a few months. So, well, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine as well. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Awesome. Well, before diving into Eurovision, I want to ask you something which I find quite interesting. On your Instagram bio, you wrote, slowly but surely making optimism my bitch. You actually described yourself as an optimist in training. So how did you come up with that life motto? Was there any specific situation in your life where you decided yourself for it? No, it was over the, over the time, I think. I, I started thinking like that in school. Like I, I saw a video. I saw a video, like one of those inspirational videos, you know, where uh, somebody, where a child said a like he memorized a text and he was like if you're always seeing the negative things you train them so stop training them and 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 saying like and if you and, and like what he said really make made sense you know like i think when you always concentrate or when you always see the bad things you get better at seeing the bad things and and in the video he said it's also possible to do the, the other side like the, the the opposite if you always try to see the good things so if you try to see the good things you get better you get better at seeing the good things and you train it and at the beginning it will be hard but you can train it and, and that's that's what i like it inspired me and so i'm i'm doing that well i can imagine that it can be hard to stay optimistic in all kinds of situations so are there any moments for you where it is difficult to stay optimistic and how do you deal with these kind of situations of course all the time um all the time it's hard, it's hard to stay optimistic because we're just human it's, it's utopian to think it's possible um what do i do when i'm not optimistic will i cry <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh yeah it's i think the the best thing is to have like people to talk to about it like when i'm feeling down i talk to my friends about it and they usually cheer me up and for my family and i think that's so important because then you see the other's perspective, perspectives and you see that what you're mad about, like they, they, they take my job then and try to see the optimist, the, 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 the good things or try to see the hope in those situations. And yeah, I think that's, the, that's what I do. I talk to people about it. Well, when I first saw you, I immediately noticed that you are high of energy and very mm -hmm. optimistic. So from where do you get so much life energy? How do you keep yourself so energetic? I don't know. I really don't know. Like people, people always assume I take drugs or stuff. Like they say, oh, he's on cocaine. No, no, I have never, I've never taken any, any drugs like that. And I would never, and I don't drink coffee either because it just only makes my heart beat faster. No, I don't know. It's, uh, I guess it's, um, it's, it's, it's just like, I don't know. I don't. Really, I really don't know. <laughs> it's just part of me. I have a lot of energy, and it's annoying too sometimes. I want to travel through time with you, starting from the point before you were announced as a German act for this year's Eurovision Song Contest. You actually expressed your wish to compete in one of your TikTok videos, and someone contacted you to and made it possible for you to enter the selection round. So, what was your first reaction when you got the message that you made it into the selection? Uh, it was. Uh, I was like when I first got the message that he might have the context, I was like, oh, don't raise your, like, don't put your hopes up. Don't raise your hopes high, Hendrik, because this might just be a, a, a fraud. Like he could just be a person who wants to have contact with you because, because he likes the videos. And after he got the context and then I got the call in the evening with Verna and I was really like I was really excited and I sat down there and did my hair and and and, and I really like did light like very nice lightning and then he said oh you 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 could go uh, if you uh, if you if uh, if you finish the music video uh, you can be in the first round and I was like I actually I think I just was like okay okay and like focus on this music video make it done make it make it like like because I only had five days to cut it I think I was just like 
when I got the message, I was like, okay, I really have to concentrate on it now. I think that was my first reaction. Yeah. Well, here we are. You will represent Germany this year at Eurovision, but I don't feel hate. Of course, the song has a really strong and important message to tell. And I'm sure you already explained it a thousand times already, but can you explain us the meaning of the song and how you personally feel connected to it? Yes, I can. Um, the message of the song is not to respond with hate when you are getting hate. So if somebody's bashing you, if somebody's uh, patronizing you, you should not fight back. You should not, wait, you should fight back, but you shouldn't patronize back. You shouldn't bitch back. So like, so it doesn't become a bitch fight with two people like bitching on each other. But um, yeah, find a respectful way to tell a person that what they are doing is hurting you. And I find that message really important because I see it online. Like when, when I, because of course, because of the song, I tried to post like stories where people hated on me and tried to show how I respond to that. But like a lot of a lot of the followers are like, oh, I hate that person. Oh, he's so stupid. Oh my word. How 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 can you be so calm, Yendrik? He's he's so he's so bitchy. And I'm like, no, but that's the message of the song that those people don't mean it. Like they 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 are hating on me right now, but we can show we can talk to them in a respectful way that they are hating. And maybe they will, and usually they understand it. Like, it's really true. Like, yeah, it's, and, and it worked in my life a few times. So why not, why not put it on the Eurovision Song Contest stage to spread that message with the world? Well, the music video to your song deals with six different kinds of disrespect. And you actually started kind of a project where you talked about each of them with people who have experienced disrespect and the outcome was huge so many people shared their stories with you so my question is how did you come up with the idea of this project and what was your intention when starting with it well the like when the music video came out and when i saw the reactions of it i noticed that well of course a lot of people didn't didn't get the stories because the music video is very chaotic. There's a lot of things happening. And of course I made it like to entertain also. So most of the people were like, oh, this is fun, this is fun. But um, so I felt like I should point towards those stories because we, we just like me and my friends, we decided on those stories because we wanted to share, like we wanted to make aware of those kinds of disrespect. And so I decided to talk about them and yeah because it's six stories i decided to talk about them in in six days to just make aware of them and it was amazing how many people shared their experiences and that that and also their 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 advices which i really really love because there were so many different advices on how to deal with that those kinds of disrespect and hate uh that was yeah really inspiring for me well, unfortunately, you just mentioned it. You also received disrespectful messages after your song has been released. And as your song is about dealing with hate, I think it's quite important to know how you handle with these kind of situations. So how do you personally deal with hate? I try to, like, um, respond to it. When, okay, there's two different kind of hates. If it's, if, like, the, the hate I receive online right now. If it's... Well, okay, so there's the, the shallow hate, which is like, oh my word, his hair looks ugly, he's so annoying. And that one you can just brush off and be like, oh, okay, they just want, like, I don't care. I like my hair, I like how I am, so it's cool that you think that, I don't care. If it's hate, like, towards me personally, like, oh, you're, you're gay, I hate that, or, oh my god, you, I'm so hurtful, I'm so hurt because you 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 put a genital into your music video and it really offended me i tried to respond to that because um yeah because because i like to like i i i want to interact so if the person says i have offended them in a nice way i i say oh i'm sorry i will change that but if they say oh you offended me i hate your song i hate you this is so stupid i say okay but you could have said it in a nice way couldn't you and um well usually like sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i try to like i try to see the person as a as a human being you know not like a, as a hater because yeah because everybody has bad days i guess 
So if it's just like shallow hate, don't take it seriously. If it's if it's hate like against your sexuality, take it seriously and respond to it, but not in a hateful way. So the song itself is very energetic. So I'm very curious to find out how your performance will look like in Rotterdam. Can you give us some details about what we can expect from your staging? Well, it will be very energetic. <laughs> I'm moving a lot. I will be moving a lot around. Uh, it will be fun. It will be fun. Well, speaking about your performance, we have to talk about your performance at the Spanish pre-party. I personally loved it. You could see that it was made to share joy and positivity. So I wonder, how did you, how did the concept behind the performance happen? Can you tell us the backstory? <laughs> of the, of the pre-party? Yes. Um, well, I wanted, because we're not allowed to, uh, to throw holy colors at the, at the, at the, um, at the Eurovision Song Contest, um, I wanted to put that into a pre-party because I was like, oh, I love that because it's like part of the song. So we did that. <laughs> And then, I don't know, we just went to the church basement where we shot the music video. And uh, like right in front of it is the, is the little place where we shot the pre-party. And it just like, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't planned to do a one take. Like we had multiple cameras on us, but we knew we only had one chance because of the holy colors. So we, we like, um, yeah. We planned it, we staged a bit, but not like, <laughs> we staged so much more. We had like so many ideas. We were like, oh, we have to put this in and we have to put this in. So half of the things did not like, did not uh, happen <laughs> because in the, in the moment of the shoot, we forgot. But uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> Thinking about it, it was like I, I said to them, we have to put so many ideas into this so that we are stressful. We have to be stressful. So, so otherwise there, was, there, were, there will be moments of, of, of boringness. And they were like, Hendrik, we can't do all of it. And I was like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. And they were right. We couldn't. <laughs> well, as you know, this year, each country has to record a live on tape performance, which will be used in case they cannot travel to Rotterdam. And you actually recorded yours in Lithuania and you met with the Rube and had a great time. So, how were the recordings for you? Are you satisfied with the outcome? Yes. Yes. Well, um, I'm satisfied, but it's not 100% that what we want to see, what we, what we want to show in Rotterdam. So after shooting the live on tape backup video, we actually changed quite a few things, uh, like the LED content in the background. We changed that. We changed the camera perspectives. So I am really hoping that we will be able to perform live as the live on tape backup video is not quite the thing yet. Uh, speaking about Eurovision, did you follow Eurovision before? Do you have any special memories or favorite songs from the past? Yes, I've been, I've been watching the Eurovision Song Contest since I was a child. Uh, actually, one of my friends did, like he, yesterday, he did, uh, yesterday in the evening, that's why I'm hungover, <laughs> he did his Eurovision Song Contest final because last year we did the same. He did it on Zoom. And we had our little contestant, like our, our, we have our winner, like in, from my friend's group, we already have a winner, but I'm not telling. <laughs> it's actually my favorite too, but I'm not telling. It's not me. It's not me. No worries. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't part of the, because I'm, because those are my friends. Um, but what, what was, what was the question? Sorry, I, 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 I went to another story. And um, the question was, if you have any special memory. Yes. Songs and he that. showed, he showed in his pre-party in between the songs, he showed, for example, the flash mob, you know, the like yeah. uh, glow. And now and so many memories came back. I remember watching that. And I was so like, I really liked that flash mob. I, it was my favorite song of that year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is, a, that was a memory that came back. And uh, also, what I always say when the question comes is, um, I, I remember when Alexander Ribak won, mm -hmm. like well, that was a great moment because I, I used to play the violin, it's over there. And um, so seeing somebody playing the violin in a pop song and yeah, which was, it was really, it was really impressive. And I really liked that. Well, there are actually only a few weeks left until we get to see you on that big Eurovision stage. So how do you prepare yourself for Rotterdam? How far are you with your preparations? Well, I have to, I have to train. I have to like train every day now, rehearse 
I haven't, I don't have, I don't think I have the time today. Hmm. Maybe in the late evening, but I don't think I have the time. Okay, I, don't, I can't rehearse today, but I will be rehearsing every week, every day, next week. Just singing the song, just doing, going through the choreography because I need to get my, um, you know, that otherwise I'll be like, ah, don't fear, hey, hey, I just fear. And I, I, don't, I don't want that. So those will be the main preparations, just doing the thing all over again, doing it, doing it, doing it, like in, in a, in a in a loop <laughs> so and otherwise everything is ready to go to Rotterdam and we will see there right what what we have to change well we can't wait to see your performance in Rotterdam Jendrik thank you so much for taking <laughs> the time you have lots of fans here in Turkey do you have a final message to all of our readers at easyturkey.com yes enjoy the show just enjoy it like See, see the Eurovision Song Contest for its reason why it got created, to come together and to celebrate music together and not only as a competition where you hate that song or you like that song, don't see it like that. And secondly, if you have any free space in your top 10 list and you don't know where to put, which to give it, give it to me. <laughs>